You're watching a free sample video from Teacher's Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. Determining central tendency. Um, there's three main ways of determining central tendency that you need to be familiar with for the exam mean, median, and mode. And when we say central tendency, we're saying we have a set of data, uh, a set that's comprised of certain members. In this case, a set of homes that have different prices. And we wanna see how best we can represent a general truth about that set. Um, what is the sort of central tendency, in this case, of the home prices? Um, so there's many ways that we can calculate that. Let's talk first about mean or average. Average, mean, those are basically synonymous. Um, the average or the mean is found by adding all the values of the members of a set and then dividing by the number of members that are in that set. So let's say that on this particular block there are six houses for sale, priced as seen below. What is the mean price of the homes for sale on this particular block? So we want to add up all the prices, right? So we can add 200 plus 400 plus 100 plus 600 plus 300 plus 200, and we get 1800. And then we say there are six houses on this block, so we're going to divide by six. So 1800 divided by six is 300. So we have averaged the prices of these homes. $300,000 is the mean housing price, the average housing price in this neighborhood. Next, the median. The median is the middlemost value. You can just think about the median is what goes down the middle of the road, right? So it goes down the middle of the road, median, middle. Um, it's found by putting the member of a, of a set into sequential order and selecting the middle value. Um, if there is an even number of members in the particular set, then there's not gonna be one that's directly in the middle. If, it's a, if there's an odd number, then there's a value that's right in the middle. That's your median. But in this case, with the houses, for example, um, there are six houses, so there's not gonna be a single one in the middle because you have an even number of members. So what you do in this case is you average the two middlemost values. So the first thing you need to do when you're finding median is to put the members of the set of data in order. Um, and you can do that from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Here we do it from smallest to largest. So the housing prices, 100,000, 200,000, we have another one that's 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, and 600,000. So we put those prices in order here. The middlemost value would fall between 200 and 300, right? Um, so we average 200 and 300 you, by adding them up. 200 plus 300 is 500, and then we divide by 2 and we get 250. So 250,000 um, is the median housing price in this particular neighborhood. The last way that you need to know for the test of finding central tendency is mode. Mode is the member of a data set that occurs most frequently. So it's very uh, useful if you're trying to find, for example, what is something that's most popular. What's the most popular uh, brand of cologne that is uh, worn in the United States? Whichever, if you survey a large group of people, whichever one comes up the most, then that's probably the most popular, that's the mode. So on a particular block, there are six houses for sale. So again, we're looking at houses. Price is seen below. What is the mode price of homes for sale on that block? The price that occurs most frequently is 200,000. And in fact, in this case, it's the only one that occurs more than once. Um, but if you had one housing price that occurred twice and another one that occurred three times, whichever one occurs the most, the one that occurred three times in that example, uh, would be your mode housing price. In this case, again, there's only one that occurs more than once. So obviously that's the one that occurs most, 200,000. 200,000 is your mode housing price. Sometimes you need to understand why you would choose one measure of central tendency over another in a particular case. So how do you choose the best measure of central tendency? Well, it depends on whether or not the uh, members of that set are consistently distributed. Uh, meaning, are they all sort of in a, uh, in a sort of uh, similar range and are they evenly distributed throughout that range? Or are a bunch of them clustered at one end of that range and then you have one that's sort of uh, way uh, separate from the other ones in terms of value? 
Um, so range, uh, just to give you that term, is the distance from the largest value to the smallest value. Uh, that's the range of the data. Um, so if there are members in that set that are not particularly consistently distributed within that range, we call those outliers. Um, if we have outliers, median is usually a better measure of central tendency than mean. So if they're all fairly consistently distributed, like in our previous examples with the houses, um, then mean would probably be a good representation. But in this example we see here, we have one house that's $5 million that's in this neighborhood now. So if we were to calculate the mean value, um, the mean value of homes in this neighborhood would be very, very high compared to what most of the houses cost because this $5 million outlier would be skewing our data. But if we took the median, we would still get a median that is fairly representative because median does not get skewed by outliers. Um, when you're tracking trends or popularity, mode can be a useful indicator. Uh, so again, if you're trying to find what, what member occurs the most. For example, if you're trying to determine what style of jeans is most popular among high school students, um, you would look for the mode result. Um, so whichever type of jeans uh, occurs most often, that's the most popular, that's the mode. Uh, so that's a little bit about how you find mean, median, and mode, and also a little bit about why one versus another may be a better measure of central tendency depending on the particular case that you happen to be looking at. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.